I just want to spend a few few moments highlighting some of the important um, important parts about these other two two areas, uh, making information uh, accessible. As you can see, um, there are a lot of people in the world who use cell phones uh, a lot more than use um, laptops, in fact, and a lot more than use uh, even land-based land phones. A lot of uh, places cell phones are leap leapfrogging the development of all wire-based phones and stuff. And this is basically the trend that we're looking at when we're deciding about where search is going to be in the next 50 years. Search is not going to be on uh, your home computer primarily. It's going to be on your cell phone or whatever replaces your cell phone. The kind of thing that everyone can have all over the world and that they can take around with them when they need information. So a lot of the things that we're thinking about are motivated by that. Information about where you are, what restaurants are interesting near you, how to get to where you want to go, are important in this state to the same extent as, you know, what were the costs of the American Revolution or who was the first president of Brandeis University or something like that. Um, and so we think about how do we answer those first kinds of questions, how do we make it easier to find out the president of Brandeis without having to type in all sorts of things, go through spell correction, because you don't even know how to spell Brandeis and uh, you know, scroll through the results on your tiny screen to get to the right answer for you. So these are a lot of things that are motivating our thinking about how we develop search in the next 50 to 100 years. We develop search in a way that works for mobile, that works for devices other than PCs tethered to a desk. Well, we've already got lots of efforts in that area. We can see some of them. Um, I don't think it's the last word by any means. I don't think anyone would say that our experience. How many people have tried to do a web search on a mobile phone, Sidekick, PDA? Keep your hand up if you think it was a wonderful experience. <laughs> One person. Okay, we solved it for one person, so we're just a bit more and we'll be there. But um, we've got a ways to go, I think, until, until you can say this experience is good, even as searching on the web. And certainly the experience of searching on the web isn't as good as the experience of being able to talk to someone knowledgeable about the field who can actually have a conversation with you to get just the information you need. So the problems are getting harder because the context in which you're trying to be in are getting more challenging. Um, the uh, kinds of constant errors that can change as well, according to this slide, he's, he's looking at a, a video of his voice. Or she, I can't tell. Uh, however, we haven't given up on the laptop yet. Google has supported the uh, laptop for every child, one laptop for child effort. Um, the idea is to make it cheap and hand crankable, so you don't even need to be in a place with good power to use it. Um, and it has built-in built -in wireless. The idea is that you can use the same kind of networks they're using for cell phones in these areas, and that you will have you know, a world of information at your fingertips. One big problem with depending on libraries or other physical structures is you have to be near them. This is intended for the people who can't be near those kinds of things to be able to get access to the same information. The last uh, uh, area that I want to talk about, making things useful. I'm going to skip with just one example that is, um, that is related to uh, this venue at, at, at um, um, the, the health library. Um, and this is um, Google Co-op. The idea here is that we have all this information. The big problem with uh, information is making sense of it, is figuring out exactly what information is relevant to you and how it applies to you. Um, computers still are not smart enough to figure that out. They don't know enough about context. They don't know enough about you. What we've decided to do is try to bring in human expertise into the system as much as possible to get domain experts to help categorize, to help uh, rate sources in terms of reliability, usefulness, and so forth. And to use that as a way of making sense of what can be in a more flawed information. Uh, Google Co-op is the name of our effort to do this. Basically, we have lots of different areas where we want experts to focus their attention. The first one that we worked on is Google Health. And you can see on the slide some of the kinds of results of this effort. You can see that we have different categories. You can uh, talk about you know, what you want to know about this disease, what you want to know about this medicine. Are you an academic person looking for you know, technical talk about contraindications and 
chemical structures. I have a patient wondering whether you should be taking it or not. I have a doctor wondering how you should be educating your patients about it. Different categories for each of these. You can kind of help identify yourself in a way that we can then make sense of. But we don't depend on the computer to identify these categories. We depend on people. So every domain will have different categories. Here we might talk about the domains being scientist, doctor, patient. In another domain, like cars, it might be manufacturer, dealer, or customer, and so forth. We've been um, pleased with how this has been going. You can see some of the uh, content that we look over. An uh, important part of Google Co-op is making sure that you have reliable content so that people who go there, especially in health, as anyone who's ever tried to look up a health issue on the web knows, there's a wide range in quality and in, um, authoritativeness of the information out there. Uh, Google Co-op helps use experts to kind of find what could cover the widest range of authoritative, useful information that people could have. Why do we start with health? Why is health important to people? Now, if anyone who's looked at you know, budgets for the uh, US um, economy knows health is uh, increasingly important to people. Um, in fact, you get more health queries than queries of any other single type if we try to categorize our queries. And um, health has traditionally been an, an, an area where there's been a lot of information asymmetry. Um, you go back to the paternalistic doctor days in the 40s and 50s where the doctor told you what to do and you did it. Now there's been a shift to the other side where the patients are empowered and are the ones who are supposed to be making the decisions. Uh, eventually, I think they'll settle down into some kind of dialogue between the kind of knowledge that doctors have and the kind of knowledge that patients have. Uh, but it's important that everyone be talking with reliable, useful knowledge to do this. And empowering patients in order to be able to fulfill their half of the bargain is essential if they're going to want to have health care um, move forward, I think, in the, in the next 50 years. Health is changing a lot. And I think having this kind of information available is going to be essential to having that change be uh, go not necessarily smoothly, but to to go along in a way that's beneficial, or maximally beneficial, I think so. Uh, we expect that Google will become important to people with you know, health, that's fine with us. Uh, but we think that more important that um, it will be increasingly important for people to find out information about health decisions that are important to them on the web.